Hey guys, welcome back to Home Built, and in this episode, we are going to attempt to fit the Audi V8 into the Rockster. All right, guys, those of you who haven't been following, um, basically what I am doing is I am trying to fit an Audi V8 into uh, my 1998 Boxster. Um, it has been done before, I'm not the first to do this, but if these sort of videos are the, uh, the type of thing you like to see, uh, please think about subscribing and uh, hit that notification bell. I'll let you know when I have got something new up. And if you uh, have missed what I've been doing, I'll, uh, I'll put a link up above so you can catch up uh, to where we are. But before we start tackling the engine today, I thought while we've got Harry up on the hoist, I thought we'd go into a little bit of the carnage that uh, Harry copped last week on Luftwasser 2021. So as you can see, I just parked it up. It's uh, still absolutely filthy, and um, it definitely copped a few stone chips and stuff. That's uh, par for the course. I was pretty much ready for that anyway. Um, that front bar, there are things I want to modify on that later. I mean, the wheels sit in too far on this car, but I can't bring them out wider because they actually scrub on these corners here. So um, when I get around to it, I probably will be modifying that. Uh, overall, the car did really well. Uh, I need to do something about airflow inside the car because uh, on long trips in the heat, there's just there's no airflow unless you wind the window down and then it's really noisy on the highway. Um, with the windows closed, it's actually really quiet. It's quite, uh, quite comfortable. Going underneath the car, I have discovered that um, we have, by looks things, a bit of a, uh, a weep of transmission fluid. It's all nice and clean, but that's obviously coming out from the join of the gearbox. At least I think it's coming from the join, but it could be coming from one of these bolts up here. So I might have to have a look a bit further into that, but uh, it's definitely weeping. It's definitely uh, leaking a bit. So I'm going to uh, check that level while I'm up here just to make sure that it is good before I bring it back down again. On the performance side of this car, um, I think I've basically worked out. The issue is, is that these uh, headers are one and a half inch and I think they're a bit small and that is what's hurting the top end of this car. I am really happy with the performance of this car. It, it goes so well. It's such a good car on the road, but I think maybe one and five eighths uh, headers would really, uh, really open it up. Um, I might see if somebody out there has a set that I can borrow just to try, uh, see if it, uh, see how it feels. But um, overall, it ran so well with this old exhaust. It sounds so good. It just, it was such a great car. All right, so first things first, I'm just gonna check the fluid level on this gearbox, and then we might look at getting the uh, Harry out of here and getting the Rockster in. So we have the Rockster up on the hoist and I'm just having a look around now to see what we need to keep, what we need to uh, get rid of. One of the things I can get rid of straight away, uh, I'll get rid of this air conditioning um, lines and stuff like that. Obviously there is not going to be any air conditioning in this car, it's going to be a race car. It doesn't need air con, even though sometimes that makes it a bit better. Um, the air con didn't work anyway, so that's no big loss. Um, so uh, I'll just remove that, see what else I can sort of uh, get out of the way, and then we might start look at um, what we're gonna do about this engine. So yeah, there was definitely not one little bit of gas left in that aircon, so that was uh, quite easy to remove. Um, let's get this whole unit out of here. All right, so I have now bolted on the Roxa transmission onto the Audi V8. Those who haven't watched previously, um, this is a direct bolt-on because this gearbox is essentially the same gearbox that 
Audi and I believe Volkswagen have used in a lot of their front wheel drive cars. So um, it directly bolts on. I haven't got a flywheel and a clutch yet. There are um, adapter flywheels to convert. Uh, a lot of the uh, Audi guys have converted their cars to manual. So there are manual conversion flywheels, which have a, um, a different pickup for the crank angle sensor because the factory crank angle sensor on the auto is in a different spot to the manual. Um, uh, the clutches are... I think a lot of them use uh, clutches out of an RS4. There, there are clutches that will go on. I think there are flywheels that will go on. There's a bunch of mixes. Uh, some you need a, uh, a small spacer that goes between the, um, the, the engine itself and the gearbox to sort of space the, uh, the gearbox back a little bit. Um, others, I believe, don't need it. So I'm going without it to start with. I'm, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll easily be able to modify engine mounts, I hope once I actually get there. But uh, for starters, now it's all here, it's on my lift table. Um, I'm going to start lowering the car down over the top and see where it all sits and see what I need to do to get this thing to actually stay in the car. Okay, so moving in here, I realized that uh, I left the factory air box in, so I have to remove all that because that is going to interfere with uh, what I'm trying to do, getting the engine in. But uh, most of it seems like it's going reasonably well, so let's get that out of here. Alright, so initial fitting, the, um, the gearbox is supposed to be in here, so there is heaps of room, but I still need to come down a bit further. This mount here uh, needs to line up this hole here, but the engine is now stopped where it is. Um, I think it does need to tilt. Uh, I need to raise the back end up a bit higher um, to get the, uh, the angle right. If we come around, if we come around into the top, um, the engine is fouling on this tab that holds the, uh, the cover in place and I think pretty much everybody cuts that off. So um, I'm going to lower the engine down a bit now, trim that tab off and, uh, and also see if I can re-align uh, the engine a bit more, tilt the, uh, the rear end up, up a bit higher and uh, give it another go. All right, well, that was a lot more work than I expected, but the engine is now sitting in the car sort of where I want it to be. Um, there's a few little things that I need to look into now and uh, this obviously took a lot longer than I thought because there was just little things that were interfering, moving bits and pieces, trying to get the engine sort of sitting in there, but it's in there now the way I want it. Let me take you through now and show you some of the, uh, the little things that I'm going to have to do to make an engine mount. So I've been doing a lot of research in how to actually mount this up. So this is the gearbox at the back here. This is the factory gearbox mounts. And um, the engine at the moment is actually on quite a steep angle uh, going down towards the, uh, the front to the, to the engine. The gearbox is sticking right up high in the air. And uh, a lot of the guys actually modify these mounts to drop the gearbox down a couple of inches because uh, as you can see, I don't know if you can see over there, over in the back there, there's the, uh, that's the exhaust. And so I've got to get the exhaust out of this gap here to um, uh, get it through. So I, I think it just makes it fit easier. There's plenty of movement in the, uh, in the tail shafts themselves and the drive shafts to uh, actually drop the gearbox down a bit. So that's not an issue. Uh, moving up to the front of the engine. So um, it's quite tight up in here. What some guys do to, uh, to make an engine mount up is this is where the factory uh, Porsche Boxster mount mounts up up in here. And uh, so this is the, uh, the factory engine mount for the Boxster. And some people make a bracket for that, remove the power steering and bolt it into this place here and make a frame for that. The issue is, is that I really want to keep the power steering. I don't want to change over to electric power steering. I can avoid it. If I can just basically connect this up and keep it running the way it's supposed to, that's all good. 
So what I'm looking at doing now is what some others do is this is actually where the factory Audi uh, engine mount was, was mounted and I think I'm going to use the factory engine mounts from the Audi and make up a subframe that holds the engine mounts that goes over, mounts up to the uh, original Boxster mounts and then also comes over and connects up into the, uh, the rear suspension mounts here for the, uh, uh, for the car. So that will actually support the Audi factory rubber mounts and hold the engine exactly where I want it. So probably not as much progress as I would have liked today, but there was lots of planning and, uh, and sort of setting things up to get stuff done next week. Um, obviously this is my side project. My main project is still the Alfa Ferrari. That's not, uh, that's not slowing down. So I don't have as much time to, uh, to dedicate to this Rockster, but I don't want this project to take forever. I hope to get the, uh, the engine mounted in the next episode. That should be um, on the cards. So um, hopefully you're enjoying the, uh, the, the process. Um, join us on Patreon if you uh, want to help out and uh, keep me making these crazy projects. Uh, and you get to watch the videos a day early, ad free. And if you need to find any parts for any of your Porsches, make sure you compare prices at Porsche Parts Digest. Blah, 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 blah. Porsche Parts by Jeff.com first. All right, guys, see you next time.